Hello everyone, Dr. Williams here, and today we're going to be making DNA origami. So you should have your template. This is the template that I provided for my review. Your teacher may have provided one for you. However, with all of the templates that I've seen, if you notice your dark lines, your bold lines, and your light lines, they're all structured in this way. So the way we're going to fold the DNA today will work for my template or the one that your teacher provided. So let's get started. Once we're done, you will have something that looks like this. Cool. <laughs> the first step will be for you to cut out all of the excess from your template. By that, I mean to literally trim off all of this, very careful with the lines so that you are not losing part of your DNA molecule, okay? Then the next thing we want to do is notice the dark or bold line down the center. What you're gonna do is take your DNA molecule and fold it in half along that dark bold line. I started mine before just to make sure <laughs> I didn't have any hiccups here, but you want to make sure you get that crisp fold. All right, now you have your two halves of your DNA molecule. So you want to have the horizontal bold lines facing up with the opening to the right. So now let's look at the structure of our DNA molecule. If you notice, we have our backbones on the side and in the middle is where we will have our actual DNA base pairs. The large uh, rectangle will represent our sugars while the small rectangle represent our phosphates. Some of you have a drawing of a five um, carbon ribose and maybe a dot or something else here for your phosphate. We're talking about the same thing. For, so our nucleotide will be the, phos the um, sugar, phosphate, and our base. Sugar, phosphate, and base. So when we're adding our bases to this side, what we're looking at to guide us again would be the bold lines. Let's say if my first base is thymine, then that complementary adenine would be inside the bold line, but separated by the light line. Okay. Again, let's say I'm going to use cytosine. Now I'm not following any order. I'm using random order for my basis. Your teacher may have provided you with a um, sequence. For my review, I'm not providing you with a sequence. You can make up your own sequence. What I'm more so concerned about is how you pair them, okay? So cytosine, again, inside between the bold lines and separated by the light line would be its complement, which would be guanine. Let's model another one. Adenine, separated by thymine. Okay, so you want to fill this in all the way down, making sure that your complementary pairs are inside the bold line. Once you're done with this side, we're going to flip it over. And here we have something a little different. We have the bold lines going across, diagonal, I should say. Let me model the first. I'm going to start this one with cytosine. But instead of putting it here, that's going to be outside of my base pair. It's going to be outside of the bold line. I want to stay diagonal. So this time the light line is going horizontal and I will put my G here. Let's say I wanted my next one to be A. Then the complementary T will be here within the diagonal lines. Let's do one more. G, my complement would be C. 
you notice the empty one up at the top. Well, if you notice, this one goes off the page. The complement will go off the page. So I just don't like to leave it blank. I'm going to put one there. I'm not, you can put pick anyone there to put there. Um, since there is not anywhere we can put this match, I'm not going to be grading you or looking at that for you. Once you fill all of this in, the last one will also be a blank because this last one down here does not have a complimentary that's on the page. It's off the page. So what we can do for that last one, or you can do it for the first one, you can switch it up. Go ahead and add your name. You need to get credit for all of your work. <laughs> Once you complete both sides, you should then have something that looks like this. Now remember, your base pairs will not look the same as mine because you are making up your own and they should not look like mine. Some of you will have ones that your teacher, a sequence your teacher gave you. Those of you that's doing my review again, you make up your own, but it should not be the same as this. Now here comes the fun part. We get to color in our um, each part of our DNA and we get to fold it. So what you need are six different colors. Six different colors for this template. You're going to have one color, any color you can any you can pick any color. You will have one color for your sugar, a different color for your phosphate, a different color for um, sodicin, a different color for guanine, adenine, and thymine. Once you finish color coding your entire DNA molecule, all of your phosphates, your sugars, your thymines, and your adenines, then we will be ready to fold. Pause it here and go ahead and color code your DNA molecule. Now, once you've color coded it, you may have something like this. So if you notice, I chose since, well, it's the Christmas season, so I decided to stay Christmassy. And I chose red and green for my backbone. All C's are the same color. G's are the same color. A's and T's are the same color. I will be looking for this um, when I review your molecule. So this one isn't folded in the middle. I'm going to go ahead and catch this one up and fold it in the middle. So we have that center crease. Okay. Now this is what you should have. Let's go ahead and start our folding. A little off there. Quite sure yours was much better than mine. <laughs> All right. Now the first thing you want to do is to have again the same as we did before we're going to start with the um, opening band toward to the right and all of our horizontal bold lines facing up all right now we're going to fold back on each of the bold lines I push this flap back, fold it on this bold line, and then I lift it up because I don't want to fold over on it. I'm going to go down to the next bold line, fold back, and flip it up. I understand, and you guys can see that the bold line does not go into the phosphate. That is fine. It will work out in the end. Going to the next one, folding back, then lifting up. Now, it you guys will probably be okay, but it works better for me when I flip it over and then I continue on that way. Just folding over on the bold line, flipping up, going down to the next bold line. I want a definite fold 
But if you notice, I'm not doing as hard of a crease as I did with the first middle fold down the center. That's because when we come back to this, we're definitely going to be reinforcing our folds at a later time. But you want to be careful that you are on that bold line and that you are definitely putting that crease in there. One definite. All right, all the way. You should notice it's beginning to curl up on itself already. Good stuff here. Now, this time we're going to flip this over where it's curling under. We're going to flip it to where it's curling up. And the reason we're flipping it to curl up is because we want the bold diagonal. Remember that bold line is what we're folding on. And again, we're going to fold away from us. So taking this all the way down, even into the backbone, we're going to fold it back, then lift it up, fold the neck, go down to the next one, fold that back, and lift it up. And you're going to continue to go down. Going to the next fold line, folding it back, lifting it up. It's a little trickier <laughs> than what it seems. Some of you may be moving a little faster than me. If you need to speed the video up, feel free to do so. If you need to pause it, feel free to do so. I tend to let, I'm trying not to let my perfectionist side take over but it's, it's coming out a little bit here. And if you notice, it's beginning to fold. It's beginning to twist. We're beginning to see that twist. You want to go all the way down. Oh, it's slipping from me a little bit, but I think I got it. There we go. So not only do we have it curling in, but we also have it twisting. Good deal. All right. So the next thing that you want to do would be to take this and fold your back bones over. One, and they're going to fold over, not facing the same way, but one would fold in and one would fold out. So let me show you what I mean by that. This bold line is what we're gonna fold on. I like to start with the, not the flap, but the inside. It makes it easier to fold. And what I would do is put it down this way and fold inward. Use the light line as a guide. If I fold in at the light line, then I should see my bold line on the other side and do my crease. Okay, now I'm going to flip this over because I don't want both of them facing in the same way. I want one to face in this way and the other one to face in on the opposite side. And again, I'm going to use that light line in order to help guide me to make sure I will fold properly and see my bow line come through on the other side. There we go. Now here comes the really fun part. <laughs> I can hear my students now saying, no, this lady is crazy, but seriously. We, um, if you take this, the bowl is down, the light diagonal facing up, the bold horizontal facing up, okay? This should kind of, the, the diagonal should kind of naturally fold toward us at this point, and the bowl should naturally fold back. We want to help that along. Keeping our backbones folded in, I'm going to fold the diagonal toward me. 
crease it in. I'm not creasing that tip in, I'm letting that stay up, this tip up, but I am creasing the diagonal in. Now I'm taking this bold and I'm going to push that back, keeping this top part down, holding that down, I'm gonna push this back. So I have the diagonal and this bold pushed back and I'm gonna crease that in again. So it may take watching this a couple of times to really catch on to how this is going. Again, my diagonal, I'm folding toward me. I'm gonna crease that in. And then the next bold horizontal, I'm pushing back. And I'm following the natural fold that I've already set. The diagonal coming toward me along the diagonal. And you may have to force this to fold in. And really, this is where that other crease, taking time to really crease it. And now I'm at this next horizontal. I'm gonna push that back. I'm just gonna keep going. Diagonal toward me. Fold back. If you need to do a little tucking, extra folding, this will be the time to do that. Going toward me and back. And you begin to see your staircase forming. And notice I'm taking a bit more time with this because I want to make sure that I have the creases crisp, so to speak. And this, I'm gonna make sure I keep that in place. And the last thing you should see is your name. Again, make sure your name is there so you get credit. Now, once you're done, you have your collapsed DNA. I'll tuck that in, my backbone. And you just want to gently extend it. Not all the way out, but just extend it. And then for your backbones, Lift this up just a little. Not all the way, but just a little. Here you go. Now you should have your DNA molecule. Pretty cool.